Hey guys, even here and I wanted to start this video by giving you some not really great news. It is Phil Heath basically clarifying that there is no plans for that Kai Green vs Phil Heath rematch, war, whatever Kai was blabbling about. So in that post that Kai made that I made a video about yesterday, Phil Heath commented and he says Leslie Kai Green, I ask you to go grab a bite to eat and now you're saying we're doing the Olympia? Damn bro, let's get to the first base. So basically there are no discussions between these two guys about Olympia or whatever. Whatever Kai said made zero sense, I mean Phil Heath has no idea what is going on. As I said in my previous video, he gave no response, but now he did give us one and now we know that he is clueless about this. Kai's response to this was no Olympia. Kai versus Phil. So basically he's saying Kai versus Phil in something else. I don't know in what. And he says no Olympia. Now does this mean there is definitely not gonna be an Olympia for Kai? Or that he simply didn't mean that in this post? <laughs> I'm still being very optimistic and hopeful. But yeah, it means it's it seems like Kai is just trolling us once again, like a millionth time. And it kind of takes a number of times for a person to stop, you know, commenting on this, giving him any attention. Nick's strength and power stops talking about him, doesn't mention him at all. Me, however, I'm still doing it, but uh, I won't be like this forever. If he keeps doing this, if he doesn't compete this year, I'm gonna stop reporting about Kai as well. Phil even shared this to his story, and he also adds, you are fake news, and he tags Kai Green. <laughs> So these guys apparently still don't like each other. I mean, Phil probably doesn't like simply the fact that Kai is putting his name out there, making it seem like these guys have some kind of agreement, some kind of plans for the future, competing against each other, or doing whatever project together. And all it was, was Phil Heath calling Kai for lunch. This was on Twitter and Kai shared this on Instagram. So he says, uh, where are you at? I'll come to you, Kai versus Phil. And Phil replied to this by saying, Kai, where are you at? Wanna grab a meal? I hear you're in Florida. So that was it. That was it. And the whole thing, mark your calendars, war is coming. Kai versus Phil, that was just a troll. That was not real. There was no agreement between these two guys. I mean, I assumed it's really gonna happen because I wouldn't think Kai would mention Phil's name like this and not actually have this confirmed by Phil or even talk up to Phil about this. And a similar thing happened to Phil as well when he said this thing about Brandon Curry's legs. Uh, Honey Rambo and the other guys filmed him without him knowing it. So what is going on? Why everybody wants to make it like Phil is saying stuff that he isn't saying? So yeah, apparently as far as Phil is concerned, he has no idea about this. He has no clue. And as far as Kai, is he gonna compete again or not? <laughs> It seemed really, really likely and that's why I made the videos about it, but after this thing with Phil Heath, it seems a little bit less likely to happen. But just looking at this physique, I mean, him being so big and so shredded, just tells me, like, why would a bodybuilder prep? I mean, get this lean, I mean, suffer. He had to suffer for this. This, this did not happen so easily, no way, no. Why would somebody suffer so much to get shredded and then just, you know, not compete, make two photos for Instagram, right? Doesn't make a lot of sense, guys. I don't know if you ever prepped, but that's hard. Getting lean, getting lean like that, that that's a lot of work. So maybe he just wanted to do it for himself, you know, to have another photo with, with, with a good conditioning. But, I mean, the likelihood of him competing is higher this year than it was ever in the past, I don't know, five years since he retired. So I still want to stay positive and optimistic and believe he's going to compete. But let's wait until the Mr. Olympia and see what actually happens. All right, next I have to mention somebody more relevant, a great, great potential in bodybuilding, somebody who was never able uh, to get conditioning, right? But he has all the other tools to be the greatest in the world, potentially. That's Lionel Biecki, obviously. And this is his uh, back shot I guess it's recent, he didn't exactly clarify, he just said back day, and here he looks shredded. He's on the Arnold Classic list, so hopefully we will see him there. He hasn't been super active lately on Instagram, at least I haven't noticed, but this is the most recent update, uh, if it is update, that we saw, and his back looks great. I mean, this is a good back. And this guy, if he pulls it together, if he gets conditioned, like, properly, 
I mean, just look at this. This is William Bonek, and William Bonek is a thick bodybuilder, and here he is closer to the camera, he has a better angle. And still, he doesn't look more impressive than Lionel. Why didn't he place lower than Lionel here? It's because of the conditioning. You cannot probably see it here in this photo in particular, but the judges can see it. You can see it in the videos, especially from the back. His glutes are never in. And you can see a little bit in the stomach here and the chest. It just looks a little bit too smooth. So if this guy finally figures it out, he can beat William Bonek. I mean, look at him here. It's not a big difference. And William Bonek is the top, top runner because he won the last two Arnold Classics, or yeah, he was second in 2019, he won 2018, I believe, and 2020 he also won it. So he is definitely the favorite. And uh, here he doesn't look much more impressive. He probably doesn't look more impressive than Lionel at all. In some other poses, yeah, I mean, of course, he deserved to beat him here, but just look at how close this is. And this is Lionel at like 70-80%. So if he comes 100%, like something like Nick Walker did at New York Pro, that's gonna be a hard, hard physique to beat. He reminds me of Flex Wheeler a lot. I don't know how much progress that he made in the past two years. Hopefully he did make some progress and hopefully he will come conditioned and that's gonna be an insane package and very hard to beat and it could be like Arnold Classic winning package. For sure, I can see that happen. But it's really, really hard to say who's gonna win this Iron Classic because it's super, super competitive. So many great bodybuilders. Among the rest, we have Justin Rodriguez with his recent update. And this back looks so freaking massive. And he says here in, in a description, people are asking him why he's not posting the back. And he says he's not posting it because it's not a problem and he does have an insane back. And here you can see the size of his delts and arms and just the sheer width. And he is so massive upstairs, he's so wide, he has so much thickness, so much dense muscle in that back. It even makes his legs look smaller because he's so wide through the shoulders. And this I heard from Fuad Abiyar and I think he made a good point with that. Because here his legs do look a little bit smaller than, than his upper body, right? You can see it here as well. This is the more recent physique update, very, very recent. And uh, here you can see the four on the left, his shoulders super, super wide. You can, you can see it even better on the stage when he's lean. And when your shoulders are so wide, you need the bigger leg sweep, the outer head. You just need bigger legs to make your legs look bigger because when your shoulders are wide, your legs are gonna seem smaller. And you can see on the photo on the right, when he shifted his body, when he tilted his body, hiding the width. And now you can see the size of his legs. So this guy hasn't got small legs. His legs are huge. He has a lot of mass in those legs. It just kind of seems like that because his, his shoulders are wide. Anyways, right now, he looks insane. In 11 weeks out of uh, Arnold Classic at 296. So he's almost 300 pounds at this point. We'll see how he's gonna look at the Arnold Classic. He says he's training to win. He is not preparing to lose. No. Even though, as he says, he's an underdog. And this guy has been improving year after year, especially in the last two years. He made a lot of progress and uh, he has been very persistent and he got his Mr. Olympia qualif qualification for this year. He decided to do Arnold Classic as well. And uh, here you can see him right now, almost 300 pounds. Pretty lean, he is gonna be a really good bodybuilder on that stage. I'm really curious to see him on stage against the other top guys. It's been almost it's gonna be almost a year after the Mr. Olympia, and I think he made a lot of progress, and I think he's gonna uh, fare much better this year than he did last year. So we'll see what he's gonna look at the Arnold Classic stage, but right now he looks absolutely freaky. Here is Hassan Mustafa, who I think has done all the shows <laughs> this year, and he's not planning on stopping until he qualifies for the Mr. Olympia. If he doesn't win a show eventually, he will definitely be qualified on points, because he's always in top 3, and he looks like he's the best bodybuilder on that stage, but doesn't have the conditioning. So I think he would have won all those shows, probably, if he was, if he was really conditioned. And this is the most recent update of his... And his legs look pretty dry, I don't know about the shoulders and the chest, and I don't know about the stomach either, but the legs, the quads are looking pretty dry. And basically what he's saying is that eventually he will figure it out. Maybe he didn't bring his full potential yet, but eventually he will do it. 
So I don't know what is the problem. I, I, as far as I know, he said this in a podcast. He is basically only eating protein and vegetables, and that's it. Chris Asilo is really pushing him. Uh, seems like the problem is not his effort. He is doing all he can. As his coach Chris Asito says, the problem is not the effort, it's just they don't know what to do with his body. And he says they're gonna figure it out, and once they figure it out, they probably won't know why did he get shredded, but eventually they'll probably figure it out, unless unless Hassan changes a coach. Maybe it's just he can't click with Chris Asito. Maybe there is some other principle that some other coach has that would help him, I don't know. So, I personally don't see him winning any shows this year, qualifying for the Mr. Olympia on points, sure. Maybe figuring it out at the Mr. Olympia, as far as the conditioning, and then jumping a few, a few spots. But to win a show, uh, all the shows that are left are really stacked, and there is a lot of great bodybuilders who still haven't qualified, and it's gonna be very hard to beat them. Such as, for example, Hunter Labrada who is just like Hassan, two weeks out of Chicago Pro, and he starts to look a really shredded look at his back. I'm gonna analyze that in a second, but overall he's getting grainy, he's getting drier, he really started pushing things right now with cardio and food, as he says, and that's why it happens. Look at this, he's prepping with like four whey protein meals. I personally thought that it's not really possible to get this big, I mean, this developed, this quality muscle, with eating six meals and four of those meals being way isolate. I thought it's not the best idea. I thought food, the real food is much better, but apparently it's the same thing as you guys can see. Or maybe Hunter is just a genetic freak and he can get away with that. I don't know, but the results are speaking for themselves. And right now he looks great. He looks bigger. He looks thicker. He looks more dense overall, you can see the dryness and everything, as he says, he started pushing things a little, because he's two weeks out, he doesn't have a lot of time, but he's gonna be shredded at that stage, it seems like he's gonna be more conditioned than he was last year at Tampa, or at Mr. Olympia, where he wasn't exactly 100%, so we will see him at Chicago Pro, a new and improved version, it's gonna be much better than every, than any version last year, I think it's gonna be a very easy and convincing win, just like what Nick Walker did at the, at the New York Pro, and here is the back double bicep that I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about, because his weakness was, and notice I'm saying was, his back. Is it a weakness now? I, I don't think so. I think this back looks really, really good. Especially those lower lats. He added a lot of mass to them, and the shoulders got really rounded up, and he looks shredded for her two weeks out. He's gonna get more shredded. And it's gonna just, and the back is that kind of muscle that just looks better as it is leaner and leaner. So once he's in his full, full, complete conditioning that he plans on being in, his back is gonna look the best. But it looks great right now, you can definitely see the improvements. So this guy is very diligent, he works like a, like a workhorse, he does what he needs to do, he gets the job done, he lifts heavy, he eats all the meals, he's exactly on the spot with everything, he's a perfectionist, and you can see the progress year after year, and you can expect great things of this guy. When the older guys retire, I'm sure Hunter will be one of the top three, top five guys at the Mr. Olympia, no doubts, very soon, maybe this year even, yeah, it's possible, and potentially a Mr. Olympia winner, I can see that happen, for sure. And Chris Bumstead, for the end, we have an update of Chris Bumstead, who is 13 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, he's about to start his prep, and he's starting this prep at 264, that's big, that's a lot of muscle, man, I mean, he's not fat, like, he's lean, relatively, and he's 264, yeah, he's a little bit taller, but he's not, like, that tall, he's only, like, 6 foot 1, so, it just tells you that these classy guys are also very big in the offseason. So, once he finally trims it down to, I think, like 230, 235, something like that, that's his weight limit, he is gonna look amazing. And uh, I know, I mean, he said this before, that in the offseason he's using very little gear. He's not pushing it at all. And when he starts prepping, that's when he starts using a little bit more, but nothing super crazy, no. No, because he has those issues and he can't really do it. If he did that, he would be an open bodybuilder. He did turn pro in the open division. And Ian Valier said that Chris is gonna do the open in Arnold Classic uh, before he retires, finally. But right now, in this photo right here, he looks pretty lean, relatively lean and big, really big. 
So, yeah, I think he has absolutely no competition with Mr. Olympia. He will win it easily, and I'm sure everybody will agree with me. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Tell me whatever your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. All the best, and bye-bye.